As medical procedures become more advanced and less invasive, the technology in increasing, uh, is increasing in leaps and bounds. Today, Dr. Jessica Stein from Women's Care Florida joins me to talk about robotic surgeries and how they differ from other procedures as well. This is fascinating. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We've already been discussing the tools that she brought in this morning. Let's talk about this and, and kind of this is your field. You're seeing what these types of, of surgeries can do for patients. Why are you so excited about robotic surgery? Well, you know, robotic surgery is really um, one of the major reasons that I love doing what I do every day as a GYN oncologist. Um, robotic surgery offers so many advantages to women um, to have less invasive procedures for really complex surgical procedures that really should be um, through what we call an open approach or okay. a large abdominal incision that now we can do these complex procedures with very minor incisions and this offers so many benefits to our patients. Well, and I feel like a lot of pe people hear of laparoscopic surgery. That's kind of would be what they're mm -hmm. familiar with. Explain the difference between the two and maybe why there's a benefit, you know, for the boat, you know, sure. both of them. Yeah, so um, laparoscopic surgery would be where the surgeon actually places some small incisions on the belly. Okay. And then that surgeon is going to put um, instruments inside the abdomen. Okay. And then they're going to stand next to the patient and manipulate those instruments. Okay. So I actually brought... Um, a laparoscopic instrument here to show you today okay. what that looks like. Um, so it has a long handle and this goes inside the abdomen and then the surgeon would use this hand piece here okay. to literally open and close um, the instrument like okay. so. And so with laparoscopic instruments, you'll see it only moves um, up and down. And in order to move it side to side, the surgeon themselves has to move it like so. Okay. So these instruments, although they're wonderful, they don't what we call articulate. So they don't move in many directions. Okay. So the difference is, and I brought some of these robotic instruments so you could see the difference. So um, what will happen is that the, the same instrument, okay, very similar instrument, okay. but this time it's going to be placed onto what's called a robotic platform. So the robotic arm is gonna hold this instrument now. Okay. okay? And then I'm gonna go to what's called a console where I'm gonna manipulate the instrument with my hand okay. in, in a very normal hand motion that a surgeon would normally make when they're doing open surgery. Okay, and you see you're actually still in the room. My first question was, I don't know, are you in the next room over? Yes. yes. So technically speaking, you could be in the next room. So it was actually um, developed robotic surgery um, for purposes of the military. So ah. you could actually uh, remotely operate on a patient. Wow. Um, so you can be outside the room, but actually the consoles that we have are yeah are usually inside the room, so. Explain the procedures that you're generally doing with the robotic surgery. What is, what's the most typical kind of case? Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, um, we can do uh, what are called benign surgeries. Okay. So these are non-cancer surgeries uh, where you could do anything from remove a cyst on the ovary mm -hmm. to hysterectomy. Um, also more complex benign surgeries like women with very large fibroids that normally would need a really big up and down incision can now have robotic surgery for that. Um, also endometriosis, mm -hmm. which can cause a lot of scarring in the pelvis and inflammation. That's a very complex procedure. Yeah. Um, and with the articulating hands of the robot, we can do a lot more fine-tuned motion. To are there going to be certain that. candidates that are better for this than others? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's important to tell patients, you know, you want to sit down with your surgeon. Okay. Well, that's um, what I was going to ask next as we get ready to close. What right. do you need to be asking your doctor? Yeah. So you definitely need to talk to them about your condition, why you're going to be having surgery. Those are probably the most important yeah. things to start with. Then what are some of the methods that ways or that surgery can be performed? Um, should it be performed robotically or is it better to have an open surgery? You know, I think a lot of women are told, for instance, they can't have robotics mm -hmm. because they've had multiple surgeries in the past. Um, but the, the reality is that criteria is going to change from surgeon to surgeon. So whereas, you know, I do a lot of surgery in women who have had so many surgeries in the mm. past, um, some surgeons may limit that. So I yeah. think it's, that's a very important question to ask. Well, again, doctor, this is all so fascinating to me. I can't imagine where we're going to be 10, 15 years from now as well. Absolutely. This is why we love our partnership with Women's Care Florida, because this is the stuff that we learn and can really get a wonderful insight on. Thank you again. You're welcome. Of course, we're going to put info there if people have questions of their own. Uh, but doctor, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.